Hello, Keith Rucker at VintageMachinery.org. Got a little project today out at the museum uh, related to our steam locomotive. I think we shared in a previous video where we had to tear that thing down, uh, have some boiler work done to it. And uh, while we got it all apart, we actually pulled the throttle valve out of the boiler. And uh, this is needing some attention. It's been needing some attention for a while. And um, this was just a good opportune time to do it. So, uh, so what the throttle valve does is this is what actually uh, lets the steam go from the boiler, the inside of the boiler, to the steam engines on the locomotive. And uh, it's connected to the, the throttle up in the cab. So when you pull that throttle open, it's opening this valve up in the steam dome. And that's what, again, allows that steam to go in. The farther you pull it open, uh, the bigger the valve opens, the more steam goes in. Uh, you can just crack this thing, and just a little, 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 very little amount of steam go in. And um, it's, again, it sits high up in the steam dome. Uh, so on the boiler, you got the boiler, there's a dome that comes up, and that's where dry steam will accumulate up in the top of that dome. And this is in the very top of the dome to get the driest steam uh, out of the boiler to go into the, uh, the steam engines. So here's just a more close-up look at the valve and how it works. So uh, again, this is up in the top of the steam dome. Uh, this flange down here uh, will go to the dry pipes that goes through the boiler, and that's where the, the steam actually goes to the, uh, the two engines on the locomotive on each, one on each side. And um, it's a spool-type valve. There's actually two valve seats in here, one smaller than the other. This uh, drops down in here like such. And uh, there's a, a linkage down here on the bottom. Uh, that goes through a complicated uh, linkage that basically inside the boiler, again, when you pull the throttle on the outside of the boiler, there's an arm that comes in here. It goes into a, it transfers the motion, you know, kind of like this, and it pushes this valve open. And the more you push it, the, open the throttle, you know, you might just crack it, you might open it up. The higher this thing goes up, the more steam goes in. So this is what we're working on. The problem that we've got is uh, is the valve seats in here. These valve seats have just um, over many years. Remember, this locomotive is nearly 100 years old, and I don't know that this uh, valve has ever had any work done to it. Uh, if it has, it's been a while, and uh, it's uh, these valve seats are just they're not very good anymore. Uh, in fact, I can lay a straight edge across this and you can see it's just kind of dished out across there. And what that means is, is that even when the valve is closed, there's still a small amount of steam that's leaking through. And uh, it's not enough really to move the locomotive, but it is enough to have steam coming out of them. It's just aggravating. We want to get this thing, when you shut that valve down, it shuts down. Uh, and to do that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the actual valve uh, part here and I've got to figure out how to get this thing mounted up in the lathe and run true. And we're just going to very lightly take a cut off of both of these. And um, it's, got, it's tricky because we've got to take the same amount off of both of them because these have to be aligned with one another uh, in this valve. If you take more off of one than the other, uh, one valve is going to seat and the other one's not. Uh, but we've got to take the same amount off of both of these, get this trued up. And then once that is done, we'll come back over to the actual uh, valve body here and uh, lap this uh, valve to the valve seat, lap, lap the valve seats and get them all trued up and get these running perfectly true as well. We've got this mounted up in the vise and uh, as you can see, we got the little stem that goes through here that the linkage connects to and the actual valve just rotates on that. It's uh, fairly tight. There's not a lot of play in there, but it does allow this to rotate around. I want to take this off the stem, so there's a, a couple of bolts up here. Let's see. Ah, there it goes. I'm going to take this completely off so that we can uh, see about getting this thing mounted in the lathe. Got a couple ideas on how we're going to go about it, but until I get this thing off and really look at how it's all put together, I may have to change my plan. All right, guys, we got this thing set up over here on the lathe, and uh, we got it in the four jaw chuck and got a center, uh, my big bull center here. First time I've used this on the other end. And, you know, down here on this end, it's running within, well, two thousandths there. I may actually, it was running better than that. I've, I've tinkered around this end. I may try to fine tune this a little bit more because I had it running within a thousandth while ago. Um, 
but we've got a little issue that I got to deal with, and if that's on the other end. Let's roll this around to this one. On this end, let's see, let me put that back up at zero. You know, we've got about, let's see. Yeah, so that's about 13,000 front out. And I think the problem is, is that this hole that's drilled through here isn't exactly in center with everything else. But for me to support this, I really need to use this hole. Um, so I think what I'm gonna actually, the way I'm gonna try to compensate for this to get it run as true as I can, and, and bear in mind too, these things are probably not perfectly round, so we're probably never gonna get them dead on perfect. Um, but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna actually adjust the tailstock in toward me to take the run out out. And this is, uh, most tail stocks are set up where you can uh, move them side to side uh, to compensate for any problem like this when you're turning. So uh, if you uh, are turning on your lathe and you're, you're turning a taper, it's a smaller diameter one end the other, you can actually adjust your tail stock for that. Uh, at the same time, you can adjust your tail stock to turn a taper. Uh, you can make it purposely off one side or the other. And uh, what we're going to do here, even though I got it set up pretty darn true right now for normal turning, is we're going to actually pull the tail stock, adjust it back and forth until we get this in running true. Then I'll probably come over here fine tune this. We'll go back and forth a couple of times until we get it running true on both sides. Downside to this is, is that when I get through, I'm going to have to readjust my tail stock to get it running true again, but it, I, I, I'm just not happy with 12,000 run out on there. Uh, I, I want to take as little metal off of this as I possibly can to clean it up, and having to take 12,000 just to get it the run out out, in my opinion, is just more than I'm comfortable doing. So that's, that's the game plan. Uh, let me get over here and do a little fiddling and see if we can adjust this out. All right, show you what we're doing here. Um, the tail stock, of course, rides on the way. There's a base down here on the bottom. It's actually a two-piece casting, and there's a key in here. And there's a bolt here, and there's one on the other side. I've got two wrenches, and these basically just, they tighten up on both sides to get this thing uh, tight. But you can loosen and tighten these up, and there's a keyway right here, and it will adjust this side to side. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to adjust this tail stock until we get our part down there running true. So let me, you see what I'm doing to be adjusting down here. Let me take you up to the actual part, to the indicator, where you can see us moving it. Part here in the lathe, and uh, you know, we're, we're looking at our run out. Let's see, let me get this back on zero. There we go, so that's our bottom end, and we're going to about 13 up here. I'm gonna roll this around to my high which is right there. And I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna adjust to half of that. So we're at 13, I wanna be at six and a half and I can't ever remember which way you gotta turn these bolts. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah. So we're gonna actually just move it in using the tail stop. Uh, loosen this up some more. Getting close. Hi guys, I have sit here and piddled and piddled and played with this thing on the indicator and uh, I've got this thing running as close as I can. And um, I'm just going to tell you, these faces are not round. Uh, and that's where a lot of our runouts coming. And I was at first focusing on trying to get it running perfectly true. Uh, but then I started realizing as I was turning things around that it, the needle was jumping around, not in a smooth motion, but it was, you know, kind of doing weird things. And so I've kind of got these just averaged out as close as I can get them. And uh, I'm working off these two faces. Uh, when I spin this thing up, you know, you can see this thing is the outside, the castings on it is wobbling around a little bit, but you have to ignore that and look at the machine surfaces and see how those are running true. And uh, like I said, I got it as close as I can get it. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to come in here and we're just going to, I'm going to start on the, the larger diameter. We're going to 
touch off on it and we're going to take it down until we get it clean. And I'm going to measure how far I have to, to uh, go to do that using an indicator from where I touch off. And then we're going to go off, we're going to touch off on the other side and take the same amount uh, with hopes that we're removing the same amount off of each side. And we may have to go back and forth until both sides clean up. Uh, but that's kind of the game plan and I don't know, I just, all I know to do is let's get in here and do it. So uh, let's, let's get in here. Uh, let me do, say this, so I've, I've got my, uh, I've got a tool in here, it's a left-handed tool. Um, and the idea here is, is that we're gonna kind of go down into this bottom. Uh, and we'll, we'll clean that up right there. I'm gonna put an indicator on the carriage and, and I'm not gonna adjust the cross feed once I get, once I touch off. And we'll actually make our measurements as far as we're cutting off in this axis because that's the axis that's important. That's uh, uh, top to bottom. So again, we're gonna touch off and just take the same amount off each side. Uh, let's, let's do it. All right, I'm just barely touching right there. Put my indicator down here on the carriage. I'm gonna go in about ten thousandths. All right, I'm gonna take another ten. Same procedure down here, we'll come in. Touch off. And we'll take the same amount off. got the uh, valve faces um, turn on the lathe they look good uh, I drop this down in here and they feel like they're seating up both on top and bottom pretty well so next step is is start lapping this in this is a long tedious part so I put a bolt through here that I can kind of drive this thing with and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we've got some uh, valve grinding compound. Let me get a screwdriver to pry that top off. So we're going to start with a coarse uh, grinding compound here and I'm just going to put a liberal generous amount on here on both the top and bottom of the valve and This is just basically an abrasive that's uh, in a uh, slurry. It's kind of a grease type material. And uh, it'll get between those two joints. 
We'll drop this down in here. And, and I've just got a um, air powered ratchet here to power this and we're just going to start letting it spin. We can reverse it. And you can actually see where it's rubbing on both top and bottom. What we got to do is we just got to continue doing this until we get both these surfaces ground into one another uh, where they're perfect, absolute perfect match. And when that's done, this thing should seal up. And uh, I'm not going to bore you guys to death. This is going to be a long process and uh, we'll bring you back hopefully at the end. I've spent about the last two hours uh, grinding these and just going back and forth, putting more uh, abrasive on there until I got a nice surface on both of these surfaces here. And you can kind of see this little frosted looking surface. And if you feel it, you can actually feel a little lip in the top where it has really ground a good seat uh, between this surface and the inside surface. And I'm looking down here, you can see a nice clean ground surface on here too. So when I got these back together, it became evident pretty quickly that they were real close to matching, but the bottom was hitting before the top. So I actually had to grind a good bit on the bottom before the top would ever start really cutting good. And that was part of the reason why it just took a long time. Really difficult setup here because you really have to get both of these seats uh, in just right. And you know, we had to get them real close and to the existing seats in here. And uh, that was challenging. That was challenging to say the least, uh, but we got it done and with lapping, uh, we were able to get a good surface in there. So at this point in time, I think we're gonna call this job uh, done. Uh, everything's been lapped. This is ready to go back together. I do need to go ahead and put the little, um, the part that connects the linkage on here and get all that back ready to go. But uh, other than that, this job is finished and uh, this will be ready for when the boiler comes back from the uh, boiler shop and we can go ahead and get this back on the locomotive. Knowing I'm gonna be on the road the next couple of weeks and that the boiler's probably gonna come back while I'm gone, I wanted to go ahead and get this done before I headed back out of town again. And uh, I'm happy to say this is now ready to go back on. So that'll be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Uh, leave me some comments. And uh, as always, just appreciate your subscriptions and you being there and watching these videos. Uh, thanks a lot, we'll talk to you later.